Listen up, couch potatoes. Go dust off your square 80s TV and turn the dial to terror. We just watched Terror Vision and we're beaming straight into your rotted brain on Beam Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting installment of B-Movie Mania. I'm your host today, Jason Hulls, and with me, as always, is Michael Hayes. <laughs> I believe that's Terror Vision Creature for Hi Jay, glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Crazy Chris Hudson. Yuck, he is so nasty. <laughs> Hudson swings that way. I know that. <laughs> oh, we're going to be talking about swinging. Talking about swinging. We watched a what I feel to be a pretty amazing movie. Um, it is released in 1986. It is Terror Vision, a Charles Band production. And I forgot that it was a Charles Band production. Yeah, I had no idea until yeah. I saw it on the on the credits. Like, holy shit, Charles Band. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense once yeah, you get does. into, like, the third act <laughs> of this movie. <laughs> totally and does. I don't know if we've ever brought this up on this podcast, but, you know, Paul and I met Charles Band. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> we've we've brought it up, like, five times. But we'll post the, <laughs> the same photo again on our website just to prove it. <laughs> of course. The same photo you can find on, like, find on, like five well, other episodes. He's, he's done so much. I think this came out a couple years before he, he started. Full Moon Features. Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. This is on Epic or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Which he owned before. This He just owned this, and then I don't know what happened, but Full Moon is what he, him and the other people who made this movie then went on to create. Yep. Yeah. And uh, this movie has a pretty pretty great cast. Um, we, should, we should chat about that. <laughs> oh, boy. Got some uh, Diane Franklin. Hell, yeah. Yeah. You got Chad Allen, baby. Chad Allen. We got... And the, uh, the, the principal from Rock and Roll High School. Burt Remsen, man, the the old grandpa guy in this, he's in a whole bunch of shit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, even uh, Frank Welker, probably the most prolific voice actor of all time, has a little little voiceover part in it. Really? And we haven't said John Grise yet, guys. John Grise. Well, we're saving, saving the best for oh, last. The King Vidiot, Uncle Rico. Ooh. Hell. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he's so amazing. <laughs> he, does, he does not disappoint in this one. Directed by Ted Nicolau, I believe it's pronounced. Sure. Um, so we're going to go with that pronunciation. <laughs> Sorry, Ted, if that's a little off. Um, should I, let me give you guys the quick plot for those of you who have not seen or heard of Terrorvision. We have a man named Stan who installs a state-of-the-art television satellite system for his dysfunctional family. However, he accidentally picks up a signal from another planet and his television system becomes the gateway between two planets. Whoops! A ravenous creature comes to his apartment, well actually it's his house, and only their son Sherman, played by Ch- a young Chad Allen, sees the monster, but his parents do not believe the boy. Um, that was uh, written by Claudio from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So thank you, Claudio, for that little IMDb synopsis. Yeah, Claudio. You know, hearing that makes me think that was this financed by the cable industry? Because what better way to tell everyone that your competitor, satellite television, sucks than to create a whole movie about a monster coming out of your satellite? Well, I, I can tell you how this was created. Um, Charles Band actually had the poster for the film. Before, <laughs> I believe before the title, certain, certainly I, before the script. I'm yeah. not surprised. Yeah, he had a poster and he's like, I can sell this concept on this poster. Somebody <laughs> make me this movie. And I don't know what it is, but make a movie based on this poster. Charles Band is just the modern day Ed Wood. Just, yeah. here's a concept, oh, yeah. I can do it. 
can can you do that anymore? I mean, can is that is that even a thing that could happen these days? Could you just have a poster and like get money well, somehow? Well, Jay, and then, I, Jay, I don't know. Yes, this this movie is proof that you could at least do it in the eighties. Oh, that that is what many failed Kickstarter movies have been. <laughs> You're right. Look, I got I'm this sh- awesome poster. I'm sure one or two of them came through, but you know, <laughs> I guess I should say I did try concepts. that. I did try the same thing with. Uh, my short citizen in the temple on Amazon. Um, really? Yeah, I had a post. I had a poster designed, and then I went around showing it to people to like secure locations and stuff. And they did say like, "Oh, this looks really professional and serious." So they let me shoot in places. So I guess it kind of worked for me. But if I didn't. You're good at Photoshop. You can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's kind of how I live my life. I just you know get a poster and like, hey, I want to do that today. That's how I became your friend. I saw a photo, a <laughs> poster much. of you, and I'm like, yeah, I'll hang out yeah. with this guy. Hey, be my friend. The two foot long hair and mir- mirrored shades really sold it for me back oh, in boy. the 1990s. <laughs> Quick takes. Talk about the theme song. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, <laughs> we will get to the theme song. I can't wait. <laughs> wait, okay, fine. Chris, how does the theme song go? Oh, God damn it. I can't even do the... I don't even remember the words right now. That's, that's as close as I'm going to get. I, I don't think this, our listeners caught that. Could you try it one no. more time? <laughs> I didn't hear it. I think I, my internet. I just came want out. to say. I just want to say. I'm going to. I'm going to segue this into my quick take. Is that I? I've seen this movie before, but I was like 12, and it's haunted me for the last 30 something years. And that theme song is always. I remember. I don't remember anything about this movie. I just remember really liking it as a kid. But that theme song has been haunting me for decades. <laughs> And then when I heard when the opening credits started and that song came up, I was like transported. You mean this song? That's that's the one. That's the one. When I heard that song, I was transported. And it's like suddenly it's like the the insanity that song has caused my brain for the last few decades. Just it's gone and I feel normal again. So thank you, Jay, for curing me. Hey, no problem. Mike, what'd you think? Also, this movie's great. Uh... This movie's like rude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> to quote, quote the King Vidiot himself, which <laughs> speaking of that sound, that that theme song, King Vidiot, a.k.a. John Grease, has the ultimate honor of being in a movie with the worst custom theme song I've ever heard. This one. <laughs> and the best custom theme song I've ever heard, which is Joysticks. I mean, Fungicide is 20 times better than this theme song. <laughs> 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 oh man, it's just oh weird. It's just weirdly high pitched and out, it's like not. It's just not catchy and weird. And I don't know how this was. This theme I, song was supposed to rocket a band into into fame or something, and it sh- fucking didn't. <laughs> I I disagree with the catchiness of this song, Mike, because it has been in my head for thirty something years. And what does that say about your head? Anyway, Jay, what's your quick take? <laughs> um, well, you know, I had never seen this movie, but I had wanted to for a long time, and I'm glad I chose it because I thought it was. I'm mean, pretty much a blast the whole way through. I, I think it was pretty fast paced, and I uh, I really liked it. I had a good time. That's yeah, my first time as well. I was a virgin with this as well. <laughs> and now we have rotted brains. Yeah, you know. So where does this uh, movie take place, Mike? Where does where do we start? Because it didn't start where I expected the movie to start. Oh, it started in space or on a planet somewhere, whichever one. Mm-hmm. And and uh, there's like. An well, alien, the planet, an alien it's the planet, guy. It's the planet Pluton. Pluton. Oh, I'm where sorry. It starts. Yeah. Okay, so on Pluton, uh, there's this alien guy, and he's got a pet up there, or a monster. We don't know <laughs> it's a pet, uh, but Not a monster. Later. And then he like the monster like gets shot out into space like as some sort of like transmission, and it bounces around a bunch of planets <laughs> like it's pinball, <laughs> and then it lands on Earth, I guess. See, yeah. it's a good thing those other planets didn't have any sort of satellite reception like Earth does. Because they would have been screwed. No, so they were just, just p- purely reflective, I guess. Yeah. Well, and can yeah, we just or, right it, off the bat talk about what the monster looks like? 
<laughs> Please do. Please do. Well, I yeah. saw the, the Blu-ray behind the scenes, like, making of this movie where they interviewed a bunch of people and stuff. And the creature designer it was actually a pretty accomplished guy. He had done a lot sure. of work. And, yeah. and so the director goes to him and only gave him one direction. He's like, just make the monster look really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it he just told him to make it look dumb he did a great job and he referred to it as like a booger or a turd or something. it's just like it looks dumb it's supposed to it kind of looks like the one-eyed one horn flying purple people eater got shunted in society <laughs> 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 That's a great description. It is. Yeah. A, it's just a mess of it eyes is. and mouths and <laughs> tentacles and um, one very phallic looking eye. It's on the end of a tentacle. It's, yeah, I think yeah. that's its central <laughs> eye, if you ask me. But. Yeah. yeah, well, the other two look pretty derpy, so I think, yeah, that point <laughs> one is the one that's able to really at least focus. Yeah, they, they said, like, they had, uh, between, uh, like, every single take, they had to slather more and more slime on it, and it was it was dripping off and staining carpets and staining everything. Oh, okay. Kind of like uh, it does in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> are, so, are you it was built in, like, four pieces, and, like, they could they had, like, two guys in there oh, trying God. to make the thing move. <laughs> God, are you sure it was slime and not sexual lubricant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, they had a whole hot tub or a jacuzzi full of oh. sexual lubricant. Yeah, There's plenty did. to go around. <laughs> well, yeah, they did. We're all we're introduced <laughs> to the uh, characters in this movie very quickly because the whole movie pretty much takes place at a house. So, Chris, who do, yeah. who do we got in the family? You know, I I'm trying to blank on everyone's names, but we basically have your Standard family. We've got the mom, yeah. the dad. <laughs> we got a brother. We got a sister. Wow! Thanks for that. <laughs> so Glad that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Give me the insights. We've got a mom and a dad. Stanley and Raquel Putterman. It's the Putterman family. Uh, yeah, we right. have the Susie's Puttermans. this punk rock daughter uh, with Very some crazy Cindy makeup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then Sherman Putman or Putterman is the son. And he's kind of the main character of the movie. The central focus really and then we've also got gramp gramps putterman who who shows up dressed like <laughs> fucking uh general hershey bar which is an old uh, vietnam protests uh character that a guy used to do and i was like that guy looks really familiar and i thought it was literally that same guy but it's not just someone dressed up as him but uh yeah he, well, he's dressed up a, like like a wild vietnam vet who's carrying a sign that says uh eat lizard tails it's a replenishable food source <laughs> <laughs> and he I, I gotta say though gramps is a total info warrior he is i mean if he oh, lived yeah. today he would be, totally oh, yeah. be listening to alex jones and the whole thing you know totally especially with this lizard tails the self-regenerating food force food <laughs> yeah. source for survival satellite you say I wonder if it could pick up recon satellites, keep track of enemy troop movements. Hey, it might be a handy little addition to my home defense unit. I think it's also <laughs> very worth mentioning what their house looks like. Yes. <laughs> it's like a swinger nightmare. Well, I gotta say, the Pleasure Dome looks a lot like that opening scene from A Clockwork Orange <laughs> with the... Uh, the breast fountains and everything. <laughs> they do have a pleasure dome. <laughs> Ta da! The pleasure dome! Wow! Now, this is what I call romantic. Magnificent architects, your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listener, that being said, inside of this giant house, it's a family's house, but it looks just like a giant coked up 80s swinging God. swingers pad. And there's literally a room called the Pleasure Dome in it. The <laughs> Pleasure Dome! This is where two grown adults raise two not adult children. <laughs> and, and that is what happens in this film. You know, the, there's there are statues where like the nipples are shooting water, <laughs> naked women statues. There's like pornography paintings <laughs> on all the walls. And I don't uh, know how I was allowed to watch this as a 12 year old. I don't know how like, Sherman watched, was allowed to the... be in it. <laughs> no, how was Eddie? Yeah, it's it, oh man. Uh, an interesting uh, fact, according to someone on IMDb, um, 
the director and the production designer scouted swingers pads around Los Angeles to get an idea of what the house should look like. (laughs) Yes. Like they went to actual swingers pads to see what it looked like so they could make an accurate portrayal. And I think that is something that is lacking this day in Hollywood. All that research, yeah, yeah. You don't go to like superheroes homes to see how their headquarters yeah. are made guys, for the Marvel movies. Guys, Come on. I Do a saw Avengers I saw Avengers Endgame and guess what? Disappointed on the lack of representation of swingers pads, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, Mike, I can confirm that that is true because the director said that in his interview. Um, and that. also when Sherman's parents, like his real parents, were sort of walking around the set looking oh, at things. No. Oh, <laughs> no. They let him do it. And, and were they, they interviewed Sherman, and he's like our age now or, or whatever. And, uh, yeah. and he was like, you know, they're real Catholic and everything. And they just asked, the, could you please maybe try to like frame our son out of the <laughs> image with the pictures if you can? <laughs> so they knew, but, you know, they weren't. But hey, those fans. paintings were tastefully done. <laughs> it was art. <laughs> it, hey, it, hey, the other swingers they bring home later thought it was an amazing yeah. house. Yeah. Oh, I love those, a lot of it, those swingers are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the artwork looks like uh, Patrick Nagel artwork, which is like something you'd see a lot in the 80s and like 90s. That was like, you'd see it a lot in like oh, yeah, you know, salons and stuff. Yeah, sharp, yeah. Like a lot of it kind of looked like that. I thought that's what it was at first, yeah. but I, I, I don't believe that as a confirmation. So we, we have a lot of eccentric people here right off the bat. And the first thing that's happening here is Stan Putterman is hooking up this big satellite. The do-it-yourself 100. There we go. And uh, <laughs> mom's doing yoga. And another fun fact. I got I, All these fun facts are coming out from watching the uh, Blu-ray documentary. Um, the mom, she's in tons of things. She was, in, she was in the beginning of Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall, of course. Yeah. I um, mentioned Rock and Roll High School. Yeah. And tons of stuff. Lots of movies. And so she's doing yoga, and she was originally supposed to be, I believe, auditioning for the role of Medusa. Oh. And oh. she read the script and was mm-hmm. like, well, that's what everyone would expect. I would really like to play the mom. And so the <laughs> director's like, sure. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> she was great. She was great. Yeah. They're just quirky. What's the difference between those two roles, though? Like, why would you expect her to be Medusa over the mom? Probably more to do. Just, yeah, more to do. Okay, so you're saying they would... I was thinking visually and physically they would expect her... Because I'm like, they're both sexual roles. Yeah. So I thought, I don't see much of a difference between the two that way. But yes, as maybe she's been known for the bit parts before this. So in which case, having a longer, more uh, pronounced role, I guess that could be the different thing. Could be, could be. <laughs> but so the first thing that's going on is dad is do, putting the do-it-yourself 100. We have uh, the salesman, the TV satellite salesman, Norton. He's over having a beer, checking out the mom doing yoga. Lay off me, beautiful. I almost got this baby wired. We got grandpa there visiting Sherman. Um, and pretty much like the big first thing is that like this blast from space hits the satellite, right? <laughs> Man. I've never seen anything like that before. So then we got the family gathering. They're watching TV. Grandpa's not a big fan, I believe, of television. Well, until Medusa comes on. I mean, he's, he seems pretty enthusiastic about Medusa. <laughs> and what is... Okay, we've said Medusa a few times now. Let's talk about what Medusa is. What is Medusa? Well, well, she is... <clears throat> she's like a uh, kind of an Elvira character. I guess would be the most familiar one you'd know from the 80s. But I guess uh, like Sven Gulli. Any of these guys that... Uh, any of these... these horror late night horror movie hosts on you know independent television stations she's hosting movies kind of giving a little uh commentary before between commercial breaks that sort of thing yeah yeah totally yeah yeah holy tomato except she's got a lot i mean a lot of cleavage like more than elvira like way <laughs> more yeah yeah but she's got like these like little snakes on her head mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't know and elvira's got a lot of fucking cleavage man <sighs> And like you, you, well, like okay, I well. know I know Medusa's supposed to be kind of a joke, <laughs> like she's a, a, a satire. But I, man, Elvira's got some fucking cleave going. Like <laughs> there's a lot of fucking cleave. <laughs> All right, well we'll 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 call it even then. Um, the doorbell rings, and Susie, who you know is Diane Franklin in this movie, who is a super punked out yet yeah, kind of Valley Girl talking uh, punk. Hey, my TV flipped out. I missed the new noodles video. Yeah, but she looks like Cindy Lauper. Yeah, 
she Indeed. opens up the door for her boyfriend, O.D. O.D. You gotta come in. My parents want to meet you. Oh, wow. What a drag. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yep. I love O.D. in this movie, and I am considering adopting his look from now on. Oh, yeah? Yes. Nice. Yeah. You're just jealous of that hair. <laughs> well, I'll get a wig. Not only that, but it might save you from any uh, satellite television-enabled monsters. That's <laughs> true. Uh, I think O.D. was probably my favorite character of the movie, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's great. <laughs> he's so a great. super punk. Straight up studded gauntlets. See, they say, they say punk, but he's all heavy metal. He's got a wasp t-shirt on. Yeah. yeah. He's in a he's, band, he's right? He's heavy metal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, little dude. You into metal? Kiss the boot, man. Kiss the ass, bozo. He looks like your typical like er, like mid '80s heavy metal fan. Yeah. yeah. You know, with the, the the metal studs, lots of leather. Yeah. You know, long hair. Oh, he's talking like dude. I saw the, his part of the interview. He was mentioning when he auditioned for the role, he had like the wig and just went in with his shirt off. <laughs> and did the part <laughs> and they, he got the part and then when they, they were doing he was acting this he said several times he had to talk to the director and ask if he was going too far over the top because he's like oh, no. I feel he's like I feel like I'm going way too far here and the director's no. like no 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 <laughs> you're no. good you need to you need to ramp it up a little bit more oh man this whole movie over the top Pretty much so like campy. every time he talked, I was so just to- in, so into it. Yeah, buzz off, dude. I want to party. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite line is, is I, I forget why she yells this, but the daughter at some point yells, Squidsville. <laughs> and in, in disgust about something. And it's so fucking good. Oh, yeah, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, OD and, and uh, Susie want to use the jacuzzi. You know that night oh. the, in the pleasure dome, and the yep. parents, God. the parents, yep. they just say no because they might be nope. swinging later. Mom, can we use the jacuzzi tonight? Uh, not tonight, baby. Your father and I might be swinging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the it's parents known. are so open about being swingers, <laughs> and it's amazing. And it's funny it's so because great. they live in this whole house that we've described that is a a sex pad, and they have a special <laughs> pleasure dome. Um, but we find out later that they've only tried swinging a few times before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. This is a, maybe this is like a vision board of a house where they've just been like putting it out there, and eventually it's going to happen for them. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like the field of dreams for uh, sexiness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I, I got to say though, real quick, that uh, one of my favorite gags in this is when they're getting ready for their swinging night out, and they're talking about OD, and the mom thinks he's kind of cute, but you know the punk thing's just a phase. The dad's like, can you believe the way he's dressed? You know, it's such, so ridiculous. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's putting on his medallions yeah. in his like stereotypically yeah, yeah, yeah. 1970s <laughs> swinging looking outfit with the eight <laughs> buttons unbuttoned. It's such a great little gag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loved that. <laughs> uh, okay, so yes, the parents leave. Grandpa's supposed to stay with Sherman. We don't really know what happens to O.D. and, and Susie, right? Like, they're just kind of gone. They just go out, yeah. I think they're they just, just leave, yeah. I don't know if it yeah. explains it or not, but it doesn't matter. They're, they're gone. It's just, yeah. it's just Gramps and Sherm. The, oh, the, the satellite guy, the satellite salesman is supposed to stop by because the TV's acting kind of weird. Yeah. Um, I mean, that'll happen when you've picked up a inter, you know intergalactic monster. Yeah, and we are seeing that there's goop, you know, draining from the, the satellite box. Um, they kind of yeah. cut to that every once in a while. Well, that's why the satellite um, guy hates the, the do-it-yourselfers. So let's talk about the first time the monster pops out here. Um, it doesn't just pop out. Okay, it, it crawls out of up. the TV. It, it, it sticks its tentacle eye, creeps it slowly out of the TV, <laughs> up into up into the fucking blanket with the young boy, and just slithers on up next to him until, yeah, the, until yeah. it wakes the boy up, and the boy wakes up to a, a giant dick eye in his face. <laughs> You know, it's a good thing they have a giant bunker in the house. <laughs> That's another wing of the house. I, I love this. Yeah, they've just got the, the sex dome. They have the sex den, which we haven't even talked about yet. The pleasure den. Wow. And then we've got the bunker. Oh, it is <laughs> a doomsday prepper's wet dream. 
Oh God, yeah. There's yeah. machine guns. There's grenades. A heavy door. Plastic explosives. Yes. Okay. So Gramps and Sherman are in the bunker. Um, yes, they are. Uh, unfortunately, Norton shows up at this time. The That's sales the satellite repairman. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Poor guy. Gramps and Sherman confront him. Right. Because they yeah. think he might be. All right. Yeah. That they might. He he might be the burglar with the Halloween mask. Or uh, the giant, the giant eye, Mike, as as you put it, the uh, giant dick eye, I believe. Right. I oh, right. Yeah, he could be that, but he's not because he's clearly human, and it, it it gets him. We're just gonna put it out there. It, the creature gets him while he's trying to yeah. fix the satellite. Yeah. We don't really see it happen though. It's just no. Yeah. Mainly, yeah. We just see it. You know, he screams, and then it's like, ah, Gramps is sneaking a drink of whiskey and doesn't hear shit. But Sherman's all about like, Gramps, did you hear that? Yeah. He's got those young ears. And who's yeah, the next yeah. one to go? This kind of surprised me. This yeah. was very surprising, yeah. Gramps. It's Gramps. <laughs> they, they use Gramps to reveal just how, uh, you know, how the monster works. The monster's well, got what? What? A huge, disgusting Little. tongue. Well, yes. But the monster's got this uh, this <laughs> hook claw. hand. Oh, the, like, hand. mandible claw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. and it grips Gramps' <laughs> temples basically. Well, and well then, he talked. And Gramps talked about you got to get the brain shot. Yeah, so he got a brain shot literally because it exactly. injects fucking whatever digestive fluid into the the victim <laughs> and digests the victim. It's green. And turns them into just green slime. Doesn't it? Doesn't it show a shot of Gramps' pants or something and and <laughs> slime just like a bucket of slime yeah, hits the floor? Like, I yep. thought it was just crushing his head at first because you see. Get a, he- a shot of his head being crushed, but then it instantly cuts down to his, his where his socks would be, and it just slime comes out of his yeah. pants. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I guess he just got digested. And then yeah, like, he the gets digested eternally, the and then <laughs> and the, mo- yeah. the monster when he licks it up, it's got a tongue the size <laughs> of well, it took a man's arm. Yeah. Inside the puppet to to waggle this <laughs> giant tongue with these little spines and stuff on it. It's this big oh, nasty God. tongue. It is amazing. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was it was fairly disgusting to be honest. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it did, it did a pretty good job with those effects, though not as disgusting, I would say, as when we we see little 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 Sherman run back into the bunker to get safe, and that's when you realize that Gramps has like. Four Confederate flags hanging up in there, and you're like, oh, I guess, I guess it's fine. He's dead. Who it gives a makes, shit? Well, he, we did say he it was an sense. Alex Jones yeah. Infowars guy. Yeah, well, so it, it becomes yeah. yes. I mean, it obviously becomes very obvious at that point, though. I, I was bummed that Gramps died, and then I saw that, I'm like, eh, never mind. All right, so Sherman's hiding out in the bunker. He's trying to call the cops. They don't want to listen because he's a kid. Uh, yeah. Pretty soon, mom and dad get back with uh, some friends. Spiro and Cherry. <laughs> oh, Spiro. I, oh man, I, I love Spiro. <laughs> Creating life and taking it away like the gods of the ancient Greeks. So great. Oh, it's so great. What is, is he he's Italian? A, he's a real he? man. He's Greek. He's Greek. He's Greek. He's, oh, that's he's right. He's Greek. All, he's totally about like everything. He's like, is, is that Greek decor? No, nah, it's Roman. He <laughs> loves Greek history. He yeah. loves the everything everything he almost everything about he says has something to do with greek culture like from antiquity and he's so full of zest he's a great he's, he's a great so character great. i really like him he's a manly man a manly man he's yeah, he's, he's a real manly man the manliest of men but he doesn't mean it how he, like he doesn't mean it in like a testosterone like Oh, no. I'm a don't touch soy kind of a thing. <laughs> he's not like that manly man. He's just like a genuinely confident man mm-hmm. is what he is. That likes boys. <laughs> what? He's he's a, a genuine confident man. Yeah. That likes boys. Well, and well, women. He likes and men. He, he's, well, yeah, he's, he's a he's sexual. Not, he's, he's a sexual not, beast. Is oh what my he god, is. is he? My god, he. I mean, he wants to know. I mean, does he take it like a man? I mean, yeah, he totally does. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's who he is. <laughs> Spiro's. I feel like, like Spiro. A man. I don't know why, but it's. I just feel like that character should have been a part of like a Tarantino movie or something. Oh my god, that <laughs> yeah. Would be I, I totally yeah. could see him that actor, and unfortunately, oh, that great. actor passed away. I think the year after yeah, this movie came yeah. out. But, yeah, that's too bad. Um, yeah, he was great. Uh, Cherry was pretty good too. <laughs> wow. This place is like really awesome. But so so they kind of pair off with uh, the Puttermans. 
Raquel is her name. Is that the mom's name? Yeah. Yes. She goes now with Spiro and Stan goes with Cherry in the Pleasure Dome and she wants to to swim. Babe, it's a perfect 98.6. It's like floating in your mother's womb. And uh, Holy Tomatoes, does Stan want to <laughs> swim with her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, the Pleasure Dome, if I may say, is what they call it full title every time. Uh, but it has yeah, this huge yeah. whirlpool bubble pool thing in the middle, and it's got a TV and a loud stereo, and the, 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 it's got Roman architecture paintings and stuff around, and the pool is a perfect 98.6, so it feels like you're floating in your mother's womb. <laughs> but what I noticed, and please don't at me about this, because I'm sure we could figure it out, but I noticed there's very little places for getting uh, getting down and dirty. You got the pool. You can mm-hmm. fuck in the pool. I get it. But everything else around it were these tiny little, like, benches. Well, Just Mike, little benches. <clears throat> Mike, Mike, to be fair, they've only swung a couple times. Yeah. They haven't figured that out That's yet. They, you know, it's I, kind of like, yeah. is their experience, it's again more experience. They'll figure out what works, what doesn't work. That's you know, right. Try some new things. And, Maybe uh, what they thought it should look like, but that doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it had what it needed. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Maybe yeah. tonight would be yeah. the night that they... You know, have a have a foursome on, on one of these little benches and realize, ah, oh, we need a little more room for yes. this. You know, or maybe yeah, yeah. maybe a suspended swing in a corner or something. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. or maybe maybe some sort of phallic monster eyeball. Hmm? Oh well, they, no, they got that covered. Oh uh, well, okay, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, we should also <laughs> point out that when Spiro and Raquel go to get the drinks. Uh, I, th- I think it's right around here. She notices a big puddle on the floor that is Grandpa. <laughs> no. uh, oh, that. That just used to be Grandpa. Yeah, she it's, doesn't know what it is, but she touches it's, it's, it. She, she, yeah, I, I literally, in my notes, just all caps, don't touch that fucking pile that looks like vomit, you fucking insane person. <laughs> <laughs> it's close in a she big just, puddle. It looks like vomit, so don't oh. touch it with your fingers. Mm-hmm. Well, I just I just found the exact quote. I wrote down the quote is uh, Sherman replies to that puddle. <gasps> Sherman, what? Have you done? That's what Grandpa was. That's what Gramps was. <laughs> <laughs> and so she goes, dips her fingers in. She, I would have expected her to just lick it, too. Like, yeah. what is this? <laughs> yeah. It was fucking disgusting. And Sherman is getting in the way of things because he's running around with an M16 in the swinger yeah, party. He <laughs> he's, his own, he's his Gramps grandson, buddy. Yep. He's got yep. M16. He's got grenades hanging off of his body. Yep. He's got M- he, and, we, and you find out it's live. It's not a it, fucking toy gun. No, yeah. it's real. He, but I gotta say, he has terrible, terrible trigger discipline. Let me tell you that right now. It's terrible. And so the, the parents rightfully get a little annoyed with Sherm, and uh, they go to lock him in the bunker, and he's, you know, crowing about how Grandpa's dead, and... Yeah. The monster here pulls a fast one, which kind of becomes important. Well, uh, uh, kind yeah, of important does. later on. Yeah. So they open up the bunker door, and Grandpa's down there, right? Is Grandpa back alive and everything's okay? Oh, you know what? Actually, no, 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 no. Grandpa's Gramps is a puppet. Oh. Totally a puppet. Yeah. Operated by oh. our monster. Operated by the monster. Yep. Yeah. And yes. with, with perfect vocal pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. confusing. Because later in the job. movie, the the monster speaks, and it's really bad at it. Yeah, and <laughs> most of the time, the monster is it... just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But somehow he's able to use a perfect ventriloquist of the dead body. Sherman gets locked down into the bunker with, well, fake Gramps, yeah. so that the parents can get back to business. Um, we do see also the. Uh, Warning from Pluthar. Yes. Oh, yeah. We see it throughout the movie, yeah. He's, we don't hear it at first, though. Right. It's just on, on television. Um, let's see. Sherman gets the idea to call Medusa because the cops yeah, won't listen to she's him. she's on the TV, yeah. Right. And she doesn't really want anything to do with him either. Yeah. Well, I mean, yep. it turns out when he's in the bunker with, with fake Gramps that the monster's no longer in there. The monster has somehow yeah. escaped uh, yeah, it's through the back television. Through the TV that's yeah. in the bunker, yeah. Right. Yeah. What? So the parents are getting heated up here. Um, when when Stan Putterman goes back in f- to see Cherry, Cherry's been swimming, right? 
I thought this was a pretty cool shot yeah. because now yeah. the pool's all foggy. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. 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 Okay, oh, yeah. let's talk about this. Like, well, I think it was Spiro going in. Oh, wait, sorry, it was Spiro. Because yeah, yeah. Stan's getting ready with his his bathing suit and uh, Spiro comes back because in. This is after the whole man's man conversation. The man, the man. And uh, when, when uh, the wife, man, I forgot her name again. Raquel. She talk, Raquel. When Raquel tells her husband that... Uh, you know, he likes boys. He's yep. really into you. So, you know, Raquel's not getting much out of the swingers uh, night. To be fair, yeah. I think we need to say he likes men. He doesn't like boys. He's not going uh, after yeah, Sherman. Okay, you know He's what? He's going after I, I apologize. I apologize, Mike. You're correct. I just, I, I got stuck on that word because they say something about that in the movie. Um, but yes, he likes men and women. So, Spiro, Spiro knows no limits. And Stan is not having that, by the way. No. Are we going to swing or what? And, and, and you know what? Before, real quick, before we get into the really cool shot with this pool thing, I think you guys have been waiting for one of these. So maybe oh, yeah. we just have to take a little time oh, for a boy. nice little dip into the kink tank. Kink tank. Me out. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for this. Uh, yes. Um, so guys, we've been talking a lot about swinging, and I just wanted to let you know that there are many different kinds of swinging. Most mm, lifestyle mm. enthusiasts don't meet up for fleshy, bacchanalian free-for-alls. Like any relationship, people have different boundaries and desires. Some couples have bisexual women and men, and some are straight, only swinging with members of the opposite sex or mm. gender. Some couples are only into soft swinging, which doesn't include actual intercourse and focuses more on touching and kissing, while other couples are into watching and others are, you know, some are exhibitionists. There's also closed swinging, where partners swap and go to separate rooms, and open swinging, uh, which is means that everyone shares the same space, like we were watching on Channel 69. Nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, that's the basically. And also, you guys should know that the 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 key swapping thing. That we yeah, put Mike. The, I was going to ask you about key parties. What yeah, key can you parties. Tell us about that. They were a thing back in the seventies. Like you'd see those in those movies. But mm-hmm. this day and age, they're actually not very common. Uh, things hmm. are much more safe. Uh, it's it's common for swingers to actually be more likely to have safe sex and be more responsible with uh, you know their partners and whatnot because it is a lifestyle and they respect each other. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks, Mike. Interesting. And now, and now back to the uh, the pool full of sexual lubricants. Sex lubricant. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, a lot of that was from Ranker.com. <laughs> Just a little. I didn't write all that. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Cherry is at the end of the pool, and Spiro yes. gets in, and he's he's getting all worked up, and. There's just this so layer of fog the across fog, the top of yeah. the pool with Cherry's head sticking out of it. It it's looks like you very know cool. exactly. You know exactly what's going on. You know what happened because Cherry was left alone for several minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she hasn't even been around for so. It's not a surprise what's going on, but yeah, the shot just looks cool. It does. It's really good. Probably my favorite shot of the movie. Yeah, it's like a POV from Cherry. So she's like in the pool, and you see him constantly walking towards her and through the fog and the water and it's it's yeah it's well, just very well Mike, done is it, is it water oh, i'm sorry sexual, sexual lubrication, lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he picks up a handful of the water he's like grossed out of slime first. yeah <laughs> and then he picks it up it's all slimy he's like oh is this slime or wait is it sexual lubrication? Sex lubrication. <laughs> he's got a fucking pool filled with fuck. He's got a pool of it. Of fucking course lube. he has the swingers. He, he bought that 55-gallon drum of lube off Amazon. <laughs> Jeez, you'd pool. need more than that. You'd need like 100 of those fuckers. It's a big pool. <laughs> and uh, as he's getting a little close and getting into it, uh, tentacles pop out and kill him, yeah. drag him under the water. Yeah, That's if you like tentacle porn, this thing might get you going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's an, it doesn't really show a lot of Spiro's death, but he's gone. And he gone. Uh, you definitely th- gone. Well, what now? This is the next surprising thing for me is that at this point, mom and dad are coming in. They're going to give the talk to Spiro because, yeah. you know, they just, they're just not into that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're well, more of the like like Mike was saying. They're more of the straight yeah. sort of swapping. So they're going to go in and oh, go ahead, Mike. I would say dad's a little homophobic, but yeah, yeah, yeah just a, just a little. Um, they go in there and they're going to confront them, but tell where did they go and why did they vomit so much into the pool? Oh yeah, my god! That's their- yes, oh yes. God. It just looks like the, the the fog is gone. It looks like someone puked in the pool all over oh it. It's very gross. It's, it's so really gross. gross. 
Uh, and but then the monster. They do finally see the monster, right? And it stabs. Right now, yep. It stabs yeah, it, uh, Stanley. Yeah, kills yeah. them both. Mom it and dad are both, both of gone. Them. Both of them are gone right now. Yeah. Yeah. Did not see that coming. Like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. They they really the movie suffers a bit from that. Someone's yeah. away from the group for a bit, so you know they're gonna die. But here they just go, fuck it, we we'll just kill them all right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, oh my god. And I, I love now what Sherman does alone. next. Sherman's determined to get out of this bunker because he's locked in, so he <laughs> blows the doors off with plastic explosives. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, hey, it'll blow your balls off, so yeah, well, be careful with it. Um, let's see. Uh, Susie and OD come back, and Sherman confronts yep. them with a machine gun. There's a monster loose. It ain't Grandpa. I think it just ain't mom and dad. Honestly, Sherman, sometimes you are such a nerd. They go through the house. OD steps in what's left of Gramps. <laughs> yeah. They all find the jacuzzi room. Uh, yeah. Sherman, of course, because as Chris said, has poor trigger control, shoots into the water. We have OD. Yeah. OD sees Pluthar's warning. And, and Pluthar's saying, if you have a satellite dish on your planet, destroy them all for 200 years or you're going to yeah, be in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he wants and, Earth to get rid of their satellite yeah. dishes for two hundred years. It this is amazing because like this is where I, this is where I'm like ah shit uh, he's gonna die because because they separated again right like mm-hmm. OD's in the pool room the pleasure dome and then the uh, bro and sis go to try to find mom and dad so oh. they sneak up. <laughs> this is this is I think my favorite scene of the movie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they, take it. They sneak. Over to the you know the bedroom, their mom and dad's bedroom. They knock on the door, <laughs> and then so they're like, peek in the door, and like mommy, daddy, and then mom and dad pop their heads out of from under the covers with the swingers' heads, and they're all in bed. So then the the kids are disgusted. And as there was a little exchange, and as they turn to leave, the son goes. He realizing that his parents aren't dead, or thinking his parents aren't actually dead, yeah. says, "Have you seen Gramps?" And then Gramps <laughs> pops up out of the covers. Right here, honeybee. She's in there too, <laughs> just getting business done or something. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> and I, I I did hear the actor talking about um, when he had to do that scene. He kind of like sort of just had a vague idea of what was that scene was supposed to really be about, you know, that they're uh-huh. so, like, they're all in bed together. Like that wasn't like totally clear. Oh, uh, fucking amazing. Oh, it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> and so Sherman, um, really only doubts himself for a, a brief second before the monster pops out again. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and they all have to run from it and it nearly kills OD. First of all, I was yep. getting worried. True. Well, until, until <laughs> another great moment of the movie. So OD falls down on the floor and he's got, you know, his leather glove studded kind of like forearm thing. And he's like covering his face and the monster sees it. <laughs> That's a fucking flashback. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. We see monster as a flashback. <sighs> It's when it was just a pet. Yeah. And its master had a similar glove and would feed it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. I love this. He, <laughs> OD's like, Did you see that? He looked right at my studs and cooled out. This dude's into metal! <laughs> yeah, like, fucking OD knew that's what the monster was looking with the two eyes that go in completely opposite directions and, and the penis eye that is, you can't look at it without just dying. <laughs> oh, and then, okay, so so then, like, they get the idea, they, they want to yeah. feed it or whatever, and OD goes, <laughs> Hey, you guys remember that movie? You know, the one about the little space guy. Ooh. Made you cry like a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh e. God. yeah. Oh God, e. What did he pull up? So he says that because he's like, I'm gonna feed it something. So he has a little cardboard box. You're gonna cry like a butthole. What is in that cardboard box? I, I think know. it was a Twix. It looked like a Twix. Okay, that would make more sense. I'm looking at it and I'm like, is that a fucking like breakfast sausage? What is this? <laughs> Leo, it looked like a breakfast sausage, but I think it was a Twix. It was some sort of like chocolate bar kind of thing. Okay, right? that makes more sense. It was very yeah. smooth, and I was very confused. I'm like, is that a sausage? 
Like, is this Frank Reynolds here? Because I am into it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so they teach it about food and uh, music. This, this is where it becomes a Charles Band movie, like signature movie. <laughs> yeah. Kids yeah. movie, at least. It be, yeah. for, for a second, this dips into Charles Band kids territory, like prehysteria <laughs> or something, where they found a little animated monster, and now they're going to feed it and shit. Cause he, you know what? Cause, now, now I really want to see fucking Josh Kirby Terror Vision. <laughs> oh, man. The monster would just eat Josh Kirby, and I'd be fine yeah, with it. Yeah, I would. That'd be fine. God. This is also where the movie becomes... The, Jay, as you're saying, they're teaching it, like, food and, and stuff. And this is where the movie literally takes a tonal... <laughs> not just a tonal shift, but an editing shift, where now it has, like, star wipes and shit, but yeah. through the shapes of, like, music notes and lightning bolts. And it's just... That's nowhere else in the movie. It's as if Charles Band decided to edit this... Or, co or make this fucking part of the movie. And that's why it's this way. And that's why it's got all the weird shit in it. <laughs> And it doesn't fit well, with the tone of the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it fits with what they're trying to do because it is a fun, kind of friendly. They're teaching the monster how to talk. They're teaching oh, the monster sense. how to eat food. They're all like, hey, <laughs> hey, this is music. It's almost as good as food. <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so they and then Susie decides they're gonna make a bunch of money off this thing. And so they want Medusa. They, call, they keep call, like it's be like calling Elvira constantly. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So they call Medusa and they try to convince her to come over to their house to have a party because they think if we can get her to see this monster, like we'll make a bunch of money by getting it on TV. Yeah. And she doesn't really seem to care. But then the cops have been so annoyed with Sherman calling them so much that they yeah. show up to arrest Sherman. Yeah, they've got a warrant for overrest. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. For, for calling the non-emergency line a couple, a few times. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're trying to deal with that. And then Pluthar comes on the TV. Yeah, And yep. the monster, it's been going okay with the monster. He's been learning. Yeah. And then yeah. he sees Pluthar and flips out. And it's, and, oh uh... God. The cop hears it, and then o O.D. slaps the monster and goes, shut up, butthole. And yeah. so <laughs> that's the end of O.D., pretty much. Like, oh, no, sorry to see it, it sucks off. his face off. Yeah. yeah. I miss... I miss... I miss the word butthole, guys. <laughs> it used to be such... Or butt juxtaposed to other words. Butt, butt head. Face. Butt face. You butt know? Fuck. Or butt. Just call someone a butt. A butt. You're being a butt. <laughs> Like I miss that, you know. Yeah, well, Might try to bring it back. Well, is you know, that a, is that a rating suggestion, Mike? Poss yeah, that's not a bad Possibly. idea. Um, <laughs> but OD has a pretty great but OD. <laughs> this, like the way he's, that's his signature, like insult is butthole. Yeah, yeah. it's a good yeah. one. <laughs> it is. Oh, butt munch. That was always a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Not too. used in this movie though. Um, no, yeah, that was a good one, though. Pretty much, okay, the movie then moves out to All Out War. Um, yep. Sherman throws oh, a grenade. Uh, the cops close in. Cop gets eaten. Yeah. <laughs> but, Jay, Jay, real quick, I, I, can, you, can you quickly edit in the soundbite of what Sherman says when he throws the grenade? You mean this? You're gonna blow his but to kingdom come. Because he uses my favorite word. He does say, we're going to blow his butt to kingdom come. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, so Sherman gears up again, and he's going on the offensive. Um, yeah. OD, oh, this is hilarious. OD is a puddle on the floor now, but with studded bracelets like yeah. his studded bracers in the puddle. They ch the, the parents are like a big pile of green roast beef. Ugh, real RB situation. Yeah, oh, yep. and and so they find the monster in the jacuzzi, in the Pleasure Dome, right? <laughs> yeah. And he's watching alien movies and laughing yes, at them. He is. He's loving it. He's yeah. cheering them on. His, like, one, yeah. his claw hand is, like, doing, like, the Arsenio. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and, Chris, you were you're, you're in Army. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you could talk about how crappy of a soldier Sherman is here. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, first of all, he has very little situational awareness uh, because as he see, so his whole plan, he sees the remote control for the whole Pleasure Dome's electronics. 
And earlier they said that, you know, don't touch the remote control because it'll electrocute the shit out of you or something. So now that's their whole plan. They're going to electrocute the shit out of the monster. So Sherm is going to sneak his way over to the remote control and just chuck it into the pool, right? Good plan. Good plan. Good plan. Great plan. Great plan. <clears throat> what he failed to realize is the trail of slime from OD, their parents, the swinger. One it's of them. It's not clear, but there's a whole one of them. There's a whole trail of slime. Sex lubricant. Leading from where Sherman is walking to the remote control. And he slips and slides in this shit for what seems like 20 minutes. <laughs> He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> And then he finally does, and then the monster sees him, and it's like, ah! Leaving his sister to avoid the slime, grab the fucking remote, and just throw it into the pool. Was yep. that so hard, Sherman? Come on. It wasn't. And I, th- I believe his gun Terrible. goes off again, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 But, um, but Sher- the, the, the monster does grab Sherman with one of the tentacles, and so Sherman is then, mm-hmm. for the next handful of shots, just hacking away at that fucking tentacle <laughs> He's with, a, a knife. with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do get a special... They, they end up running out of the pleasure zone, or pleasure dome. Of course. Into the living room, and are greeted by a surprise guest. Pluthar, baby. Pluthar. Remember Pluthar? That's right. He's going to save the day. The fucking captain of sanitation is here to pay for all his mistakes. Yep. And, yeah, right. and and give a lot of explanation for what the fuck this monster actually is. Which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. He he does give us some uh, some story behind the, the thing. These monsters are actually uh, like cats or dogs. And they're quite nice, he says, yeah. under most conditions. Until they mutate. Uh, until they mutate, yeah. 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 yeah, and then they need to be exterminated. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Pluthar, what I, I also found interesting was... Um, the family has a chance to come back to life, right? Because all Pluthar has to do yeah. <laughs> is get the DNA out of the monster, and then he can remake the parents. So no. there is some hope in this movie. It's a very hopeful movie. It is. Well, I mean, except they're, that, they're not clones. I mean, no, they're not clones. They're, not clones they're, they're their own selves. Their own selves. And there's a throwaway line here that kind of changes it, though, right? Like, well, they need to live in their own aquarium. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what's what, you know? What's I mean, but other yeah. than that, yeah. they're not clones. They're totally normal. Totally fine. Totally yeah. the same. Um, Otherwise, than themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point where Medusa shows up finally. Yes. Now this looks like a happening party. Impressed by the party that's going on. By yeah. The way. Um, she also sees Pluthar, and she realizes that. Sherman wasn't lying on the phone. She's, he was telling the truth. There is a monster at his house. Yeah, and this monster, Pluthar, has a gun pointed vaguely in Sherman's direction. No, nope. That's not the monster, Chris. Why would you hurt Pluthar? Well, because, <laughs> because Medusa's coming in and sees an imminent threat to Sherman and his sister. These boy, this boy and girl who have been calling her and talking to her all night. And there is a monster waving some sort of vaguely gun-shaped object in their general vicinity. Of course he's a threat. Of course that's the monster. So Medusa sees Pluthar, nails his helmet, and cracks it. Not so fast, asshole! Because um, yeah. he's wearing a helmet for, you know, his little atmosphere or whatever. And I, I thought this yeah. was actually pretty funny. <laughs> his fucking it was head pretty explodes. great. Yeah. His head explodes <laughs> in the helmet. Pops. Oh my god! Like they're pops. like, "Hey, Pluthar's here. Everything's gonna be okay." <laughs> yeah. Nope. Yeah. And it would have been fine if no one had called fucking Medusa. Yeah. Oh. He's he's got like he like punches his his mask, his helmet, <laughs> and then like it cracks it, and so like his, his air pressure, whatever's happening, comes out, and then his head just pops Bump. inside. <laughs> oh <my> god. Yep. <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh, the the wall bursts apart and the monster's screaming and it's like tongue is just going a mile a minute. <laughs> it's just, oh yeah! <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking intergalactic Kool-Aid man. Yeah, it really is. Now everything is flying toward it. Uh, look, there's this giant <laughs> wind. Everything's blowing around. And, and Sherman goes flying at the creature's mouth and it cuts yeah. to black. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Everything's okay. It turns morning. out everything's fine. The well, because Sherman, well, because Sherman had uh, Pluthar's gun, and he's trying to get it to work. Mm-hmm. And so, surely, as he's being sucked into the vortex of this creature's gaping maw, 
he gets the gun to work. Uh-huh. Cut to black. Everything's cool. We find out that's what happens. He saves yep. the day. Medusa uh, hires him on as a sidekick. And the daughter grows up to be Cindy Lauper. And uh, the parents come back to life, uh, though mixed together no. with the swingers. So no. they're kind of what? No. What? No. 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 I can't. I cannot let these lies stand. No. Oh. We see Medusa's driver f- has fallen asleep in the car. It's morning. Mm-hmm. And he is woken up by, oh, yeah, yeah. by Medusa, right? Is it Medusa? This sounds familiar. Medusa. This sounds yep. vaguely Medusa, yeah. Sir, yes. No, yeah, Medusa. It's, it's not Medusa. No? What? He looks what into the back like seat, her? and it's the creature with Medusa's head. Ah! <laughs> oh, the horror! Oh, the horror! Oh, oh. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then it cuts to this theme song again. <laughs> all the characters die. They all Everybody die. Everybody dies. It's such a downer ending. It is so, a downer to ending. then, yeah, to oh. then take over. Well, it's gonna the creature's gonna take over the world because he's going to the studio, Medusa's studio, to then broadcast out. But I'm assuming that means the monster could just go wherever the fuck it wants. And just eat. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I took it as. Rating time. Um, Crazy Chris Hudson. All right, what are we rating these in? Oh, I was going to say we, we should uh, rate this in Holy Tomatoes, but now Holy since... Holy Tomatoes! Now since you guys were talking about... You know, Mike wants to bring Butthole back, I guess. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can rate it in uh, OD Buttholes. <laughs> okay. I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, my rating, uh, like I said earlier in the show, I saw this movie when I was, I don't know, 12 or 13 or you something. You better not I give mean, it 12 I'm... or 13. <laughs> oh, you don't know where I'm going with this review yet, Jay. <laughs> oh. So I saw it when I was, I was really young on some sort of like independent UHF channel back when that was still a thing. I don't know how my parents let me watch this. It must have been later at night or something. I don't remember anything about this movie. So I was really excited to get back into this. And it did not disappoint. There were so many clips that when I, I watched it or heard that theme song, like, oh, yeah, oh, my God, this is it, it, it started coming back to me. And, oh man, it, it did not disappoint. It was such a fun, campy sort of... <laughs> I mean, it's it's totally stupid. It's not like... You know, <laughs> high art or anything. But there were so many great lines. The character, all the characters were just so much fun. This is just a fucking fun movie. <laughs> and, I mean, there were a couple little slow moments, I think, in that third act. It, when they started teaching the monster how to talk and stuff. It slowed down just a little bit. So it's not a perfect movie by any means. But, I don't know. I and mean, if you're just looking for something just ridiculous and fun and just stupid that knows what it is but does not take itself at all seriously, I mean... This is this is a great one to watch. So I'm going to I'm going to give this one you know, I can't do 69. So I'm going to go 89 OD buttholes. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, real good. This was great. I love this movie. Mike, let's pass yeah. it to you. I, I had the same problem, Chris, at the end there. I was like, I really wanted to rate it 69 because it's just such a good number. <laughs> you know, it's very nice. But uh, you can't because the movie is better than 69. I mean, yeah. It's nicer than 69. Um, <laughs> it, it, it is. It's a fucking 80s cheese fest, and it's very fun. Oh and if you, especially if you haven't seen it, you should see it and then watch it a second time. Because yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, it's dumb, it's fast-paced, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't let down. It's, it's, man, it's fucking stupid, and it knows <laughs> it, and it's great. So, so I'm, I'm going uh, 90 OD buttholes. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Jay? Yeah. What do you um, got? <laughs> you know, I thought this movie is totally unique. I really can't think of any other movie like this one. And it is a complete camp fest. Yeah, and, like, you're right. It's, it's stupid. Everybody knows it's stupid. But, like... They all just said, let's make a fun, stupid movie. You know, like I said, the director told the creature designer to make the creature look stupid. <laughs> so, like, like, they knew they were making this weird, quirky comedy. And I think it really worked. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think just about anybody who likes B-movies is going to have a blast with this. So, I am going to go 92 OD wow. buttholes. Wow. 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 Yeah. 
I'm and I'm the low one. Wow. Yeah, and but I mean, this, so this is might be one of our higher rated movies yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I can't this do the math, but it's great. something like ninety point five or something. It's up Jeez. there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So well, thanks guys. Uh, I'm glad you guys all had fun with this one. I've been wanting to pick it for a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually almost picked this one myself because I hadn't seen it in so long. Cool, cool. And, um, and and you know, I believe so. Jay, this is your pick. I believe my pick is next. You know, Chris. Uh, I'm glad. Yeah, I think it is your guys. What is that? Do you see that? Yeah, no, out the window. I, I, is that out the window? Can right you see there. That too. Oh God, Chris. is that is that. A, is that who I think it is? Chris, can you make the sound of a jetpack so I don't have to edit it in? Hey, Jay. Jay, I'll do the sound of the voice that's supposed to happen now so you don't have to edit that in. Oh, thank okay? you. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm Paul! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Brooks is back. Uh, hey, guys, you see that jetpack back there? What? What is that? <laughs> yeah. The one you came in on? <laughs> That's the one you flew in on, Paul. No, that no, was pretty really awesome, Paul. That's awesome. Hold on. I'm not on a jetpack literally all the time, okay? I came in no? through the front door. <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's what I'm asking. I don't know. Oh. oh. Uh, Maybe it was a terror vision beamed monster. We just watched Terror Vision, Paul. Yeah, I know. I, I just wanted to pop in and ask if you guys uh, enjoyed my Diane Franklin interview. Oh, well, it hasn't it hasn't happened yet, and because we're not releasing that till later this week. But <laughs> I thought that. But yes, Paul, we loved it. I thought that usually comes out a couple days uh, before the you know full episode. No, I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 it's either before. It's one of the Thursdays. Oh, okay. yeah, we cool. don't know. All right, people have enjoyed it or not yet. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> hey, you know what? You either have something to look forward to or something to think back upon. And you know what? I think it's important either way. Correct. So what are you doing here, Paul? So Paul, well, well, yeah, are you Paul here? what's up? Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, if I'm being real honest, I kind of miss you guys. I kind of miss the podcast Aww. a little bit. Aww. I miss us too, Paul. Uh, you know, I, I figured I'd, well, since I'm here, what do you guys think about maybe uh, me popping in and uh, hosting an episode for season three? What do you think? <gasps> What? Yeah, You're back I full not. time now? No. Oh, no. This is thanks, be great. Paul. No. Thanks, oh. just like old times. We got a main thanks. round of movies. Thanks for coming back, Paul. You got plenty of thanks stuff for coming to watch. Back. No. Oh. Oh. What do you mean? Wait. Just one episode. Just one. There was oh. one. No, listen. God damn it. Listen. Right. God damn it. Uh. Last season, there was one movie that I really wanted to review that we didn't quite get around to. So I was hoping to do that now for for this episode for season three. Oh wait, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Let me hit that. Uh, let me hit that tone the next time on tone. Hold on a second. Let me hit that. Okay. On the next episode of B Movie Mania. There we go. Okay. Uh, now that this the appropriate sound is playing, Paul, what are we gonna watch next week? All right, guys. Save up all your pocket change for the disco walking tour. Demand free drinks and add a little extra grease because it's time for the greasy strangler. <laughs> the gre- <laughs> oh yes. Oh uh, fuck. All right. Oh, I've heard of this. I've been waiting oh, so you long. You haven't no, seen I, it? No. Uh, hey, I'm completely clueless. I have no idea what the oh, fuck this Hudson, is. Perfect. You Hudson, are that's going- perfect. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god, god. Hudson. <laughs> All right. This Paul, is somewhat Paul. notorious, isn't it? Indeed. This this makes so much sense. All right, where can I watch this goddamn piece of crap? Chris, you'll be happy to know you can watch it for free on Amazon Prime. Oh, nice. Mm. Wait, Jay, Jay, should I have called this a piece of butt crap? <laughs> yeah, you should have. We're trying to bring butt back in. Paul, it, so. is this movie going to make Chris cry like a butthole? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I think... I think that's an accurate statement. Yes. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Paul. Do you think? Do you think Chris Hudson, while watching this movie, is going to get the real butt munchies? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this: I think Chris Hudson's a big old smoothie. That's a little teaser for you there. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well, oh. there you go, folks. We got Paul Brooks back uh, full time now. One and episode. We're gonna, it'll be next time. We're going to watch the Greasy yeah. Strangler. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on B Movie Mania. I have a and, question for Paul. Oh, okay. Paul, I know you've left. I know you've. You, you're only coming back for one, and we want it for more. But I know since you haven't been around as much, do you still follow us on social media? I do. Yeah. 
Oh, on like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook? Yeah, I follow you on Twitter at B, uh, let's see, what is it? Hold on, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> BMM Podcast. That's right. And that's then it. on Instagram, <laughs> B Movie Mania, all one word. And Facebook, you know, if you just type in B Movie Mania, I still do all of it. Oh, Paul, that's fantastic. Let me ask Thanks, you Paul. something. Um, since you've lost all of your clothing, um, do you still buy our t-shirts <laughs> on our website, bmoviemania.com? Since I lost all of my clothing, I wear exclusively <laughs> bmoviemania t-shirts, which you can get by going to bmoviemania.com. Yes, indeed. Um, awesome. Does that include Does that include pants to cover your but it what? doesn't. It's just T-shirts, and it doesn't work out very well. We should really get some pants on there. <laughs> you, we have sweaters you can buy. You can kind of zip them up as pants. I, you know how ridiculous I've, I've been looking, walking around Joshua Tree, just wearing that B-Movie Mania T-shirt? Oh. Well, Paul, yeah, well, Paul, Paul, thanks for wearing the T-shirt. Sure. Yeah. Re- I'm sure really you fit in a Joshua Tree, though. Oh, big let's time. Let's be honest. Yeah. Going tomorrow. Um, well, well, speaking of... Paul, also, this is actually really convenient that you're here, because I believe you and I are in the middle of our run of a cable access TV show right now. I thought it just started, like, a half hour ago. <laughs> yeah, well, in reality, it did. Oh. But of our 12 Paul, episodes Paul, spanning oh my God, this, is, this podcast, Paul, this podcast, I know it's been a while since you've been around, but this podcast does not go out live. Got it, got we it. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, we're right time. smack dab in the middle of it, and it's going well. Yeah, it's fantastic. I got to watch the uh, the premiere instead of recording this, thankfully. Mm-hmm. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, if you're watching it, you know, if you live in Chicago, you can go to Can TV 19 and on your uh, TV, like on a real TV, on actual television, cable access, like, like a terror vision television. Yes. Oh, exactly. Be careful. But it's on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. and it repeats Fridays at 4 p.m. And then we're releasing episodes on YouTube, our YouTube channel, B Movie Mania. Um, and you can watch them there too. And there's already a bunch up now and there's mm-hmm. more to come. So check it out. It's fucking weird. And Paul, Paul especially put a lot of work into it. Only about five years. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit old, <laughs> but it's great. It still holds up. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Are we done with the promos? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Can you guys hear that? Yes. Ha 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 